In a previous video, we had a look at the web content management capabilities and specifically focused in on the concept of structures. Now, in that video, we highlighted the benefits of separating your content into its data components and its rendering or template components. In this video, we're going to finish what we started by looking at the templating capability and demonstrate how a single piece of content can be reused in multiple locations, but rendered differently based on the template you choose. Now, in preparation for this video, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've created a new structure. My structure is called medical article. And then under the web content area, I created a folder to organize my content called medical articles. And then I created about 10 different medical articles. Look at the first one, you can see that the article is, of course, contains a title. There's an image with an image description. There's a repeatable field for symptoms. There's a HTML rich text field to represent the body or information you want to share. And then there's another repeatable field for treatments. So I've used this same structure several times to create multiple items that represent these medical articles. And now what I want to do is I want to start rendering these items in my solution. Now, before I can render them though, what I have to do is I have to create a template. So I go to the templates tab and you can see here, I've created one template in advance of starting the recording called medical article full. And the idea behind this is that it's going to render the full medical article or all the fields that are part of the medical article structure. Now, when I came in here, of course, I named my template and then I chose the structure that should be represented by this template. In this case, the medical article. Now, by choosing the structure, what happens is on the left-hand side of the screen, the fields area becomes populated with the individual attributes or the form fields that I dragged into the structure. This allows me now to write the general markup, the HTML that I want to use to render my article, and then remove static text and replace it with placeholder values that will be substituted at runtime with the value for whatever content article I actually choose to render. So you can see here at the top, I have this image tag, and then it's going to pull the data from the article image field to substitute the source of the image. And similarly, it's going to use the attribute for the alt to get the image description. Down here, you can see I've got a looping structure that will run uh, using the free marker syntax of a list. However, it will only actually run if somebody has actually provided treatments that need to be rendered. Scrolling up a little bit, there's one more thing I want to draw your attention to before we move on to the actual rendering, and that is the H1 tag here. Recall in the last video that we did talk a bit about how you don't necessarily have to provide a title field on your structure because every journal article content regardless of structure type, comes with some implicit or reserved fields, one of them being the title. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm using this dot vars annotation to access a map. I pass in the key, which in my case is the reserved article title, and then the dot data, which is the equivalent of the dot get data, to retrieve the value for the title. And that allows me to take the title field that Lifer gives to me on my structure implicitly and use it in my template to render something. Okay, so we've got our structure, we've got our individual content items, and we've got one template. And because I only have this one template defined, it will automatically default to be the default structure for any medical article that it's created. So if I go now to my home page, I'm gonna go to this medical page, which I created uh, before starting the recording. This is a content page. So I'm gonna use the pencil up here to choose to edit this page. And since we're working in the context of a content page, I'm going to try and do this example with actual fragments. So I'm going to open this toolbar and I'm going to choose to put in a container. The container will be full width. I'm then going to put a grid in here and I'm going to set my grid to be two columns. So I'm creating a, a two column layout uh, with a main content area and then a right rail down the side. In the main content area, that's where I want to render my actual web content articles. So I'm going to use this content display fragment that Lifeware provides for me out of the box. And I'm going to drag it into this area. And then when I click on it, it's going to give me the option to configure it. If I click this, this a modal will pop up. And I have a few different options for what I can render in this content display. Now, in our case, we're working with the web content. So we'll choose this tab. I'll go into my medical articles. And then I'm going to choose the what is an AFib. And just like that, you can see what the rendering is going to look like. Now, Remember, I did say that because we only have one template defined right now, it's defaulting to that template. So we see here that it says default template. And if I switch it to be the medical full article, that's actually the same thing. Nothing will change. But if I was to switch this to be you know, title only, as an example, 
obviously the content display would look different. But in our case, what we want is the medical article full. So again, I've got this one article called uh, what is AFib? And I've added the data to that particular content item. And then now in this context, I'm choosing to render it. Now this example is gonna have a lot more meaning to you when we fill in this right hand rail, where I'm going to use uh, the same article and some other articles, but use a different template to render them. First, let's create the template though. So we'll go to content and data, web content, and then templates. I'm gonna create a new item. First thing I'm gonna do is set the structure to be a medical article. Now the page refreshed and you can see, of course, the fields that represent my medical article sh structure showing up on the left-hand side. Now I wanna call this article promo. Actually, let's be more explicit and we'll call it medical article and then we'll put promo to indicate that it's a, a sort of succinct version. I'm just gonna grab the markup from the side here and I'll just paste it in to save some time typing. And we'll just do a quick walkthrough. Now in this case, I actually declared a style in my template. You don't have to do that, uh, of course. You can always put the styles somewhere else, you know, most commonly is in the theme. But in this particular case, this particular style is something that I want to have associated with this promo template itself. It's not necessarily something that I'm going to be using elsewhere in the site. So I've bundled it with my template. Uh, below that, you can see that there's an if condition checking to see if there's an image on the article that we're trying to render. And then if there is, it's going to actually produce the markup. It's going to uh, have an ahref tag. Of course, there's no location being sent. That would be something that I would follow up with after I was happy with the rendering. Uh, but I have some general markup, just like we saw with the full article, and then swapping in the reserved title field and swapping in the image. Okay, so I'll hit save on this. And now I'm gonna go back to my medical page. I'm gonna edit the page again. And this time I'm going to add a grid. Uh, no, I'm not gonna add a grid actually. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add the content display item. I'll choose it. And then I'll choose to render a different item. So let's choose the magnesium supplement. Now you can see the default template again is choosing to render the same thing we have here on the left. So I'm gonna switch this because I want it to be a promo. And then what I'll do is I'll get another content display. This time I'm gonna choose the same as we have in our main article. So if I go down the list here, what is an AFib? Once again, I'll choose the promo article. And this is actually really starting to highlight the benefit for us much more obviously, right? So what I've done is I've actually taken the same article that's using on this side with the full template, so the same data, the same instance, and I've rendered it here using a different template with the same data, okay? So I'm gonna hit save. Now, just to highlight the benefit here, what if I decide that I want to change this title? I'll go to my web content. I'm going to find my AFib content item. Here it is at the top. And I'm gonna change the title to uh, Y, AFib is so dangerous. I'll hit publish. And now if I go back to my medical page, you'll see that the title has changed here, but because I'm using the same content item, just a different template here, the title has changed here as well. So here's an example of how we can use templates to render the same piece of content in multiple places, allowing us to maximize the reuse of our content without having to worry about the maintenance overhead that can come with repeating the same items over and over again. Looking for more information on this topic or others? Check out our links in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching.